Good afternoon, all. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Parents, teachers, students, we are so glad to have you with us this afternoon. We're glad that you could join us for our webinar, the overview of e-testing. To give you an official welcome today, we have the registrar and CEO of CXC, Dr. Wayne Wesley. Thank you very much, Dan. Of course, it is a pleasure to come and at least give welcome and greetings to all our teachers, parents, students, and other stakeholders who value this kind of presentation. CXC is very much pleased to be offering this session in ensuring that persons are very familiar with our e-testing process, given the fact that some of our examinations at this time are offered by, via this modality. It is of particular interest this year, given the fact that we are looking at a modified examination process, which will actually take into account increased use of our e-testing modality for exams delivery. However, I must also point out that in areas where we do have infrastructure challenges, schools and the various territories are facing challenges with internet and all those uh, uh, issues associated with the infrastructure that is required, we will still make available the associated paper-based modality to ensure that none of our candidates would be disadvantaged or disenfranchised simply because they don't have access to the technology. We would have been doing several or making available several platforms like our CXC Learning Hub, which is learninghub at cxc.org, where students, teachers, and teachers will find very useful information in assisting them in their preparation. Today's session is one of the sessions organized to our Learning Institute. We would have had dedicated sessions before with teachers, on certain things to do with online learning. And today is another continuation in that series. I recognize the demand for this kind of intervention and the overwhelming responses we would have received from individuals wanting to access these webinars and workshops online. To that end, those who were unable to join directly with us in the Zoom presentation here, can actually watch us live via Facebook at this moment. So if you have persons who you know who wanted to get in and are unaware of the fact that they can watch us live on Facebook at this moment, I encourage you to send them that link or ask them to visit the CXC Facebook page to have access to this presentation. The team here at CXC, uh, uh, we are delighted to make this presentation to you. And of course, we'll be making every effort for you to understand the processes as it relates to e-testing. They are committed and ready to take your questions this afternoon and to make sure that you're comfortable with the processes as you navigate your way through an e-testing platform. Welcome to all, and I appreciate you taking the time to be with us. And I'm sure that it will be both beneficial to yourself and to CXC in ensuring that we're all equipped to take advantage of the digital space. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and thank you again. Welcome to this session. Diane. Thank you, Registrar. At this time, I want to introduce the panelists who are in the webinar on this end. We have, first of all, well, you've heard the Registrar give his welcome. We also have the Director of Technological Innovation, Mr. Rodney Payne, the Director of Operations, Mrs. Nicole Manning. Good afternoon. Thank you. I am Diane Medford from Exams Administration Security, and there's also Ms. Debbie Ann Hall, 
assisting us this afternoon from the syllabus division. Ms. Paula Nichols is our presenter and she will be speaking to you in a few moments. At this time, we just want to get some information. Uh, we've been asked by our colleagues in L, the Learning Institute to get some information on the territories being represented. So all we're gonna ask you to do is to just type into your, type your response and they will collate that information at a later date. We're glad to see there's so many people from throughout the region. Thank you so much for joining us today. We recognize that they are, this is a situation which is quite unprecedented. And we do know that there are lots of you who are trying to find ways to cope at this time. Some people have taken up gardening. Some people are, are working in the kitchen with some fabulous menus and so on and so forth. And we just, ah, at this time, we're just asking you if you could just indicate to us two mechanisms that you've been using. I see gardening there on our end. I want to remind you at this time while you're typing that as the registrar pointed out, we also are providing access to the webinar via our Facebook page and our CV, CXC TV link. We do have staff working and supporting us on those pages as well, on those platforms. And feel free, those of you who are utilizing Facebook and utilizing the CXC TV, please feel free to submit your queries, your questions, and the staff will be supporting you there as well. There are so many of us this evening that Go ahead. I, I'm just saying I'm seeing a lot of sewing and cooking and gardening and knitting and exercise, exercise and, yes. and net somebody's net and, coping you know. by doing schoolwork. Yes. And of course, they're sleeping. Yes. That's Netflix is yes. getting a lot of mention over here. Yes. <clears throat> so we just want to thank all the staff that's there with us today. We have the entire team from exams administration <clears throat> and security. We have members from syllabus we have our communications team as well we are just thankful for everyone and we also have our webmaster and we have representation from exams development and production well so thank you so much for that exercise now as we are about to commence i just want to lay a couple ground rules and advise you a couple things for housekeeping one you will note that everyone is muted and that enables us, because there's so many people that would have registered for the webinar. Um, you will notice that we expanded the platforms and so on. And with so many people in the webinar, we want to ensure that everyone can hear clearly that there's no feedback and things like that. So therefore, at this time, I want to remind you that you are muted and your computer, will your mic will remain muted for the duration of the presentation. Please note also that at the end of the presentation, we will invite a few questions which will be answered live. In the meantime, any questions which you have, you need to just put them in the question answer section and our staff will assist in responding to those. We recognize that quite a few of the questions that have come in before deal with things like, um, are we changing the deadlines for SBA? And I want to just advise, yes, those have been changed. You, your local registrars can indicate to you the dates that are the revised dates. People are asking about the revised timetable. And we're just indicating that once all of our discussions are finalized, those will be available as well. So there are lots of things that are being asked and we are going to be trying to respond to all your questions. But at this point in time, we're going to ask Ms. Paula Nichols to present on electronic testing. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to first start off. Thank you all for joining me. First of all, joining us today as we go through this session. What is electronic testing? So electronic testing is basically a replication of the paper based exam. It is just that you're using it on a computer. So you'll be seeing the same exam that would have been taken paper-based on the computer screen. 
candidates will have the option to just select their responses and go through. And I will show you the actual live candidate screen at the end of my presentation. So with electronic testing, we have three modalities. You have fully online, you have partially online, and you have offline. We speak to fully online in that you have reliable internet connectivity and you are taking your tests fully online. There are instances where you can lose your internet connectivity. Candidates can still continue their examination. The supervisors and invigilators at the center are trained when this happens, what they must do. So you have, they have the option to manually upload the test to the website, or they can try to regain internet connectivity and the candidates can continue. The tests are saved in the cloud. So suppose at the center, a candidate's computer might crash or something might happen. The candidate can switch their computer. And since it's saved in the cloud, the candidate can continue their examination from wherever they would have left off when they were on the other computer. The selection of subjects is done by the ministries of education. Ministries based on their infrastructure will determine what examinations they are able to do in their territory. As a result, they will notify CXC which examinations will be taken online and we will process those examinations so candidates can log on successfully and write their examinations electronically. How can candidates with, sorry, with the platform that is being used, we ask that candidates have the safe exam browser on the computers. So at those centers, the candidates have these technicians at the centers will download the safe exam browser onto the computer. Now the safe exam browser secures the computer so that candidates cannot access anything outside of the examination. So they're unable to browse, unable to look at anything else but the examination. Students taking the exam are using Microsoft Edge, Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, and Safari. Those are the platforms that are supported with the online platform. Here on the screen, you will see the minimum requirements for the specific Windows operating systems or Mac. Persons usually ask the bandwidth requirement the requirement is usually 512 kilobytes per user. With every administration of the exam, we have specific training for those persons who will be supervising the exam. Persons are submitted by the ministries of education to CXC and all persons who are submitted to us are trained in how to administer the examinations. If there are any challenges at the centers on the day of the examinations, they can give the candidates additional time. They also can take attendance in the system and they, can, they are trained in doing manual uploads or handling any issues that arise. For the candidates, we have a number of outlets where they can practice with the electronic exams. On our CXC website, we currently have demo exams. These demo exams, they do not allow for submission. They are only to give the candidates an experience in how electronic testing is done. And just for them to have a feel and see and to practice what it would be like in the actual exam. We also have, on a regular basis, practice sessions. Persons can submit to the ministries of education in any center if they want their particular schools to do a practice session. We also have pre-testing, which is done electronically. 
and the ministries of education would submit to us and let us know when these pretests when they want these pretests and practice sessions to be done. We also have instituted a practice database where persons can log in and do testing as well. And that is our CXC schools database. Ms. Mayfer, do you have any comment here? At this time. Thank you. Okay. How can candidates access their credentials? On our online registration system, the administrators at the school are able to generate the credentials for the candidates that have been loaded into that system. So we have here two reports that can be run by the schools so that candidates can have their credentials before the start of the exams. So we have our student user listing by center, and we also have the subject registered report. Candidates themselves can also log into their student portal once they have received their timetables and they have their registration numbers and generate the subject registered report as well so that they themselves can see their logging credentials. I'm not sure if it is very clear to you. However, you see the candidates first name, last name, their user ID and their password. The usernames and passwords that are provided to candidates, they do not change for the particular session that the candidates are doing examinations for. So if you are doing examinations in January and you are given a set of credentials, all the examinations that you are registered for, you will use those same credentials to complete your examinations. If you are registered for June, you will be issued a new set of credentials so that you can log in and write your examinations. In preparation, as I mentioned, we have the demo tests on the CSC site. And I did indicate as well that the ministries can request sessions where the candidates can actually do a live demonstration of an actual exam. We also have the CSC Learning Hub, and I'm sure persons are familiar with this. We have been pushing this as well so that they can log on and practice. On our CSC website, we also have manuals. We have manuals for the invigilators of the test, and we have manuals for the candidates. So you can also go to the link here and peruse that those manuals. I will now do a live demonstration of the candidate experience. Just bear with me for a second. Thank you for your patience. Here we have the screen that a candidate would see when they are ready to log in to their examinations. The candidate is provided with their username and their password. They enter these. And they log in. They will see the name of the examination and the date and time, and the time limit for that particular exam. You say click, click here to get ready, and the candidates will then see the instructions for the examination. They are given the time to read those instructions, and then they start the test. This is a, is an, is a language exam, pardon me. This is a language exam. So in here, the candidates would have headphones to listen to the recordings. They will listen to the recording and select the correct response. Each question appears on a different page. So this is question one. The candidates will move on. This is question two. Once again, they listen to the recording and they select their answer. And you can see that as they go through, the responses are saving. It also gives the time 
so that the candidates are aware of how much time they have spent and how much time they have remaining. As they go through, they simply select their answers. Candidates also have the option to flag a question. If a candidate listens to this specific question and they flag it because they're not sure of the response, they can continue with their examination. I'm not going to do all of them. It's just a brief demonstration of the actual site. So as they go through, they respond, they can flag. I should be answering correctly since I am a French major. Once the candidates have responded to all of their questions or as many questions as they think they can, they will select the submit button at the end. Now here on the screen, it will show you that they have 60 questions. They, uh, they did not attempt 43. So if they get here, they can select this and go back to a question as well. It will show them that they flagged three questions. They can select those questions as well and go back to them and answer them. They will also see the flags at the bottom of the screen where they have flagged, they will see the icon where they have flagged a particular question. So once they have not yet submitted, they can go back through and review once they have the time at the end of the examination they can go through and respond to the questions. And then once they have finished, they submit their response. And that would be the end of the examination. They would then log out. And they would, once the time has not passed, they will await their release from that room. Here on the screen, we have the Learning Hub post. So you can go to the website and become more familiar with what is offered in the Learning Hub. So we have past papers, subject reports, syllabuses, and other free resources. At this time, you can also send any queries and questions to support at cxcsupport.freshdesk.com. If you do have any questions right now, we will take a few questions. Uh, we are asking that you ask, we are going to select a number of persons and then we will ask you to raise your question. Ms. Mayfair. All right. So the first raised hand we had was Ms. Alphonse. So you can ask, you could, yes, you're, go ahead and ask your question. Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for this opportunity. Um, just saying, I'm speaking from St. Lucia. I just have one question that I did not get clearly. I noticed that was um, the presenter was going through the test that uh, she mentioned, I'm not sure if I got it clearly, that you could submit, and after you've submitted, you see the total number of questions divided into those questions that were answered and those unanswered and those that were flagged. My question is, do you still get to do the unanswered questions and the flag questions after you've submitted? I am not sure if I picked up clearly, I must have missed something. No, once you have submitted your examination, you that's the end. So you would have to go back to those questions before you actually click submit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Actually, Paula, I was thinking that um, I know it would be a little tough for you, but could you just show the platform again? Because I know that quite a few people, it's the first time they're seeing it. And, you know, just that's, is it possible for us to just look at that one more time so that you can view the candidate experience, what the candidate will 
see and what they will do. And Ms. Alphonse, at this time, you'll probably be able to, to see more clearly what it was she did. All right. So we just okay. go through that one more time. All right. Okay. Thank you very much for that. You're so welcome. So once candidates have logged in, they will select, click here to get ready. And then they will have the opportunity to read the instructions for that particular exam. I'm not seeing. At every point. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm only seeing your, yeah. There you go. Sorry about that. So candidates will then be able to see the instructions for that examination. At every point, the candidate will also be able to see their registration number, which is usually at the top of the screen. Once they have read the instructions, they will select start the test. And here they will see the question one. So each question will appear on a different page. Now this is the specimen paper. So I'm just demonstrating what an exam would look like. So you have question one, you would listen to the recording and you will select the correct answer. Now this is a language paper, so they have a recording to listen to. In the other examinations, it's just you see the question that is available, you read the instructions and you respond accordingly. So for question two, you select the correct, resp correct response. You move on to question three, if you listen and you are unsure of what that question is or response is, you will flag that question and then you will move on to the next one. At the bottom of the screen, you will see a flag appear on that question that you flagged. But at the end, when you submit, it will also show you any, when you click on the submit button, it will show you what questions you have not attempted and those that you have actually flagged as well. So you go through the exam. And you're reading and you're selecting or listening and selecting the correct response. And you're flagging if you so choose. Once you have reached the end here and before you submit, you can go back to any question. So you have to make sure you do your review before you hit your submit button. So any questions that you have not attempted, you can click on them from here and it will take you directly back to that particular question. If you saw that you flagged three and you had not remembered that you had them flagged, even though you can see the icon, but you it's in the test, so anything can possibly happen. You can click on the flagged ones, you select the one, and it will take you directly back to that question as well. So this is what a candidate screen is like in the actual examination. Once they have finished, they're sure they're finished, they select submit. They'll be taken back to this screen and they can simply log out of the examination and that would be the end. Thank you, Paula. All right, so our next question is coming from Wendy Cumberbatch. Good afternoon, everyone. Now I want to find out when is it that e-testing will commence in the region? E-testing actually started in 2017 in the January session with paper ones only. We have been testing since that and we have now expanded to paper some paper twos and paper three twos. So it has been ongoing okay. regionally. Okay, so it is being phased in until it becomes the mode of testing. Yes. I have some concerns though, I'm in Jamaica, and I have some concerns, re-readiness, 
I think that schools will have to have some alternative power supply because um, the Jamaica Public Service is known for uh, frequent power cuts and sometimes there is no prior notification. So I see where some alternative power supply, whether through generators or, or something, uh, I see where that will be necessary. Um, if it is, well, not if, when this comes on board fully, I, I see where that is going to be a challenge. And we also have some instability too as it, as, as it relates to the, the internet service providers. So I'm just concerned how these nuances will affect the, the exams and our candidates here. I'm not sure if across the region there, there are similar concerns. So Ms. Kammerbach, the, um, as you would have noticed in, in the pres pres presentation that Paula would have made, she indicated that as we are phasing in, it is not that CXC dictates what happens in the territory, but the ministries are the ones that are um, advising CXC that they're ready. So your ministry would have been doing their readiness checks and so on, and then they will determine right. well these centers are ready and so on. So we are working to ensure that the transition is basically seamless. We do recognize that there are some areas where the internet is more stable and so on. You do have the um, fully online mode, the partially online mode, which we are promoting. And we work with the ministries to ensure that as we move forward that the they are ready. Diane, may I also add? Of course. Um, in addition to what okay. Diane has said, we have also had Thank extensive you. conversations with ministries and they have been utilizing laptops which would have backup batteries. So during the time of the exam, if there's a power outage, the candidate still has the opportunity to complete the examination. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that information. Ms. Ramdath, ISA Ramdath, you'll be next. Your microphone is there, yes, good. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I guess you uh, good evening. I have some questions. Um, excuse if you guys says before I came a little later, but I have a question. So you guys proposed the use of paper ones in the majority of the examinations. How will these paper ones be structured as compared to the ones of the past? Will it be similar questioning types or will the format be revised to more suit this online medium? The examinations are being offered e-test and as you would have heard the registrar say, if that is not possible, they're also being offered paper-based. And the examinations are going to be formatted the same way as prescribed by the syllabus. Okay. And, um, the examinations be written in centers as would have been done in the past or will it be based out of the applicant's homes? At the moment, there is no, um, no facility for the candidates to take the examinations at home. So we're expecting that the local registrars will, will determine the test centers as is usual. Okay, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you too. All right, we're taking two more questions and so we look for someone else with a hand raised and we have Ronaldo Thomas. Ronaldo Thomas. Me, good afternoon. Yes, we are. Um, okay, I'm calling from Trinidad and I have a question for um, usually after the paper one, so paper two, the candidate um, basically receives a candidate receipt stating that where they to show us a sign as verification where they did complete the exam, whether it be paper one or paper two. If um, it is possible and where we are able to complete this exam through e-testing, will the candidate receive a verification email stating um, that they did complete the exam in case anything happens? If I may answer that question. At the moment, there's not a verification email, but the supervisor at the center who monitors the submission will have an indicator on their panel and CXC will also have an indicator of the submission being completed. Secondly, while the examination is going on, the candidate's responses are continuously sent back onto the server. So should there be a connection failure, encrypted response 
stays on the local machine, so you can't tamper with it. And the partial response goes up to the internet. At the end of the time for the examination, all of that information, if it cannot be sent back to the server, the local supervisor is prompted to save the candidate's work. So unless the machine actually stops working and you can't get to the machine, it's unlikely that the candidate's work would be, would be lost during the examination session. Okay, thank you. Thank you too, Mr. Thomas. And Ravi Nanga. Yes, hello. Yes, hello, good evening. Good evening. I am not entirely clear in the event your machine crashes. I understand that the, the answers will be there on the cloud. But firstly, if you do not have a, a backup machine, what would be the position? And how long would you be permitted to attempt to secure a backup machine? If I may continue to answer, one of the requirements for the centers offering examinations would be to have at least one backup machine for every 15 candidates who are at the exam center. Now, if that is not the case, what may obtain, and this is at the discretion of the center supervisor, is that the candidate can, in a worst case scenario, be shifted to a paper examination in order to complete the test. Okay, but thank you. We have that's not that's had many of those events in our three, three and a half year um, experience. Okay, thank you. Thank you too. All right, we do have a little more time. So Mr. Floyd McCollin. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you very much. Um, my, my questions were broadly answered. Um, That's great. I, I, really want, I really wanted to get though, the context in terms of this initiative um, and fr from the perspective of the current pandemic. But I think I'm, I'm hearing now that is going to be centered based, meaning students will have to go to centers to answer or sit the exam. And two, uh, I guess it would have been good, maybe time didn't allow, but the history of, of the whole e-learning, I'm understanding that this was being rolled out since 2017, uh, so for the last three years. So maybe some territories are more familiar with it than others. I'm not sure if we've had that experience here in Barbados. I'm actually speaking from Barbados. Uh, so- Yes, you uh, have, sir. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. So, so, so then, is is it? You spoke about demos and the uh, CXC website accessing demos and and e testing dry runs. Is that available? Do I just go on to the website? Because you also mentioned the school limiting or permitting access. I wasn't clear there. Is is it something that we wait for the schools to instruct us on, or do we go as households as parents and, and browse and, and, and view the website. Okay, just bear with me. I will share my screen so that you can see where the demo tests are located. Okay, so on the CXC website here, you have e-tests and we have a number of demo e-tests available. You have in CCSLC, you also have CSET, you have some paper ones and paper twos that are available on the website that the candidates can simply click on the link and they can practice here. Now remember that they are demo tests. So once the candidates have typed in responses here, they, when they come to submit, there is no availability for submission and there is no availability for tabulation of marks. They're just demo tests to give you a feel for what the examination is like and to give you a view as I demonstrated on the live demonstration where you see the candidate screen. That was a paper one and this is what a paper two examination would look like. So you have that facility on the CSC website for the demo tests. You have paper ones and twos and some three twos that are available. As we go along, we continue to update the website with additional tests. At present, you might not see all of the examinations that you might want, but as we go through, we will continue to update the site. So additional tests will be added. 
and you also have cake examinations. Now, as when I was going through my presentation, I indicated that schools can come together and consult with the Ministry of Education, or at times, CXC says we are going to host online pretests in specific subjects. We would consult with the ministries and ask them if they can pull together some schools in their territories to do this particular, these particular subjects. Once that happens, we then go ahead and we administer those tests so the candidates can actually do a live pretest, or the schools can try to test the functionality and the infrastructure in their labs. So they can so they also submit to the ministries and ask for practice sessions and we can host those practice sessions. You're welcome. Sorry, sorry. Hello? Yes. Yes. I, practice sessions and so it would actually be as if you're having a live examination. So you can have the candidates come in, sit in the room log into Inspira and actually do an examination. Right, and, and that would be through the school itself? Yes. Okay, but right now this this availability that you just, this demo test is available. On I can the do that right now, website. I can go on the website. Yes. Okay, and the only difference would be that there will be no submission. Yes, and no tabulation, there will, there's no tabulation. Because no some tabulation. persons are thinking that the paper wants on the demo test that when they submit, they will get scores at the end, but that is not possible. Okay, all right. Yes, okay. Okay, thank you very much. You're very welcome. All right, we're gonna take our last question for the evening and we're going to ask T. Hoyt. T. Hoyt, last question for the evening. Remember that you can continue to submit your queries and we will respond to them. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, I'm a teacher in Antigua. I teach English A and B. I would like to know what is the weighting being given to the exams since it was both the paper one and the FBA that the students will be doing. And I'm going to refer your question to one of our panelists. Thank you. So that, uh, Mrs. Manning. Sorry, could you repeat? I am oh. querying the weighting being given to papers one and the SBA for English A and B. Okay, so I think in our opening, thank you for the question. And I think in our opening, we had outlined <clears throat> the fact that the assessments will be as we would have had it in our syllabuses um, for all subjects. So as you would have had it there, that, that's exactly how it will be done. Could you clarify, please? So uh, in the because, syllabus, Ms. okay. Okay, yes. So in, in the norm, this is Wayne Wes is speaking here. Uh, the normal process for for the, or, or let me put it this way. Our interest is awarding valid grades to students that would be, that would be reflective of the competencies that students ought to demonstrate having gone through a syllabus of the nature CXC would have prescribed, you know, whichever of those syllabus are disciplined. Therefore, in completing the requisite assessment this year, we will be applying the appropriate weighting that will preserve that integrity where we are able to make assessment because even with the reduced assessment, the multiple choice and the SBAs, it is critical that we still be in a position to assess the critical competencies students ought to demonstrate. And so the respective weighting from subject to subject will be applied that is most appropriate for the awarding of valid grades. In, in the preparation for the examination, students still ought to follow the structure of what the syllabus says persons ought to know and demonstrate. So yeah. we will not necessarily come out now and say to people, uh, multiple choices, 50% or 80% or 20% or 
uh, because that would then create too much uh, confusion in the system. And I think what we want to ensure is that the approach we are taking will use the appropriate weighting that will ensure that valid grades are awarded and that the integrity of the examination process is preserved as we do assessment across years. Because one of the things we have to guard against, um, we have to guard against is you don't want anybody to look back at 2020 and say, okay, that was a different kind of arrangement. So we have to maintain certain standards that will allow for the grades to be valid because we are focusing on the competencies that student ought to demonstrate. So you won't find us right now making any public statement on the waiting because all of that is pretty much dependent on, on, on the, the, the various uh, subjects. If you look in every syllabus, there's a different kind of waiting. And yeah, for yeah. us to begin to speak to a waiting now, it will even bring more confusion to the system. And so our approach is make sure that we stick to what is in the syllabus. We are a criterion reference-based examination. We test against what is in the syllabus. And our emphasis here is that even with a modified examination process, we are ensuring that the requisite skills that are critical to these subjects are actually assessed and maintained. Yes, thank you, Dr. Wesley. You're welcome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Mrs. Manning, you had wanted to say something before, so you have your chance now before we close. Thank you very much, Dan. I really wanted to encourage all of our parents and students to continue not only to prepare for an exam, but to prepare for the next level. And um, it's something that's very important, even as we try our best to focus at this time during COVID. I also wanted to add, um, Diane, the fact that the webinar will be available on online and more important, and also importantly, the shared timetable will be out next week. So I know questions have been popping up, many questions in relation to when will the timetable be available? It will be available next week to be posted on the website next week. Well, thank you okay. so much. Um, just to point out, thank you everyone for joining. Um, just to point out, we have been receiving your questions in our support fresh desk as well as in our personal emails. We have been compiling those questions and providing responses. So those responses, those frequently asked questions will also be available once they have been finalized for you. And you can also continue to send your emails to us and we will respond as quickly as we possibly can. On behalf of the Caribbean Examination Council, I want to thank all of you for joining us today for this session. We hope that you are now more aware and have a little more knowledge about the e-testing process. We do want to extend our best wishes to all we ask you to continue to keep safe, continue to follow the protocols so that we may remain healthy. And we just wish you a good evening. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye, Thank everybody. you all and have a good evening. Stay safe. Thank you. Stay safe.